Ferguson, Missouri. The spark for what would become daily street protests was the killing of an unarmed African-American teenager. 18-year-old Michael Brown was gunned down by a white police officer on August the 9th. In the days that followed, the police responded to the demonstrations with massive force. Got a government place. It's an uprising. We are sick of the police. We're sick of being tear gassed. We're sick of being shot at. All of these young people deserve respect and justice. Force is their message. We will shoot. We will kill if necessary. An autopsy would show that Brown was shot at least six times, twice in the head. He was the fourth unarmed black man to be killed in the United States by police in the span of a month. The street protests and police tactics brought Ferguson into the national and international spotlight. Things quickly spiraled. Reports of gunshots fired from the crowd. A state of emergency was declared. The National Guard was deployed and the US Attorney General launched a federal investigation into the killing. Fault Lines was in Ferguson to witness how Michael Brown's killing sparked something bigger, exposing tensions that had been bubbling beneath the surface for years. On his knees, hands up. This is more than Michael Brown. This is about civilians against law enforcement, corrupt law enforcement. This is the area Ferguson's residents are calling Ground Zero, the epicenter of the protests. When we arrived, it was the fourth day in a row that people were marching along this street, just a few blocks from where Michael Brown was shot. The police had still not released the name of the officer involved, and people were angry. No peace! Mistrust of the police here runs deep. While more than 60% of Ferguson's residents are black, 50 out of its 53 police officers are white. African Americans account for nearly 90% of police stops, searches, and arrests. The demonstrators made it clear they would remain peaceful and requested the police to do the same. But for no reason that we could see, the mood shifted very quickly. So the police are now bringing out these heavy armored vehicles. You can see it's a Lenko armored truck. This is something that's designed for basically conflict zones to fight in places like Iraq and Afghanistan. This is an extraordinary display of force, to be honest. I mean, these guys are armed to the teeth. There's more riot police arriving behind them. This is a crowd of just a few hundred people, and it's been completely peaceful this all afternoon. The, the guys on top of these vehicles you are actually training high-powered weapons on members of the crowd you here. must disperse in a peaceful manner. The police refused to explain why they needed such heavy weaponry. So do you know why they're bringing this equipment in? You all need to move back some, OK? Do you know why they're bringing in armored vehicles? We are from here! I can't go home! I can't go home! It wasn't hard to see why the crowd would see the police presence as anything other than inflammatory. Would you like army men on, uh, with machine gun pointing at your you kids? You don't think that's provoking? The they provoking them. They asked them to move out the street. Do you see any violence occurring right now? It's peaceful. They don't have to be here. Has it been like this the last few days? It's been like this for years. For years. This, this kind of policing? Yes. This, it's been like this for years. From birth in St. Louis. Many people had come from surrounding black communities in the St. Louis area. All of them said they feel targeted by law enforcement. They've been doing this. They ain't getting away with it. Yeah, so why are things different now with Mike Brown? Tired. Indict, convict, put them killer cops in jail. The whole damn system is guilty as hell. Hands up, don't shoot. 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 Hands up, don't shoot
The police continued to point guns at the protesters. Up to this point, as far as we could see, there had been no sign of threat or violence. But the anger over the way police were handling the situation grew. Only cowards use guns! Come on, keep It's funny, right? Only cowards It's funny, right? OK, the gas is coming down now. We're hearing gas fired. We'll be, the police are saying we've got to leave the area. We're going to get right back now from the police line. The gas is coming down now. There's more gas coming over here. We're going to get out of here now. They're actually firing canisters of gas at us as we're running away. You must return to your vehicles or return to your homes. You may no longer be in the area. It is no longer a peaceful protest. You are not peacefully assembling. You must leave or be subject to arrest. Where I come from, it is about the children. Seeing our children get killed. Every, when every footage that I saw of Trayvon Martin and Michael Brown reminded me of my son. That could have been my child. Right. And they treat us like animals. They make us inhuman. They treat us what do you mean? What do you mean? They, they, they break us down. They try to strip us of every right as a human. It's about us feeling, not feeling like criminals just for driving down the street. We're supposed to be innocent. We're always guilty until we don't get innocent. Here it is. This is martial law. This is martial law. Why are you advancing towards a peaceful protest? That means that you're trying to incite, incite war, urban warfare out here. They're trained for this. Why do you think they started firing gas? Why do you think they started firing gas? Because they're trying to get us to incite a riot over here. They're trying to. They're encroaching on our First Amendment rights. Won't be no mass incarceration when the revolution comes. Won't be no police brutality. You can hear that noise. The police are now using an audio instrument to try to disperse the crowd. This is a crowd control tool. You can see the protesters are still in the streets and they're saying that they're not going anywhere. OK, it seems like they're throwing flash bombs now. There's explosions going off. We're not quite sure what the police are firing, but the gas coming down too. We're going to get out of here. In a matter of hours, the streets of Ferguson had gone from peaceful protest and calls for justice to scenes out of a conflict zone. There's a line of police advancing towards the crowd here. There's tear gas everywhere. There's explosions from flash bombs. Flashbang grenades. There's another one going off now. As the military vehicles advanced, rubber bullets were fired. Anyone on the streets, including media, was in the line of fire. The police began to fan out into the surrounding neighborhoods with weapons pointed at people's homes. It looks like they're firing tear gas into these neighborhoods here. You can see the plume of smoke. I have no idea what they're firing at. What if this was your child? What if this is your child? What if this was your child? What if this is your child? What do we want? Justice! What do we want? Now! As night turned into early morning, it became clear that divisions in Ferguson were growing deeper. Hands up! Don't shoot! Hands up! Don't shoot! Hands up! Don't shoot! Hands up! Don't shoot! Michael Brown's killing had sparked the worst civil unrest this part of Missouri had seen in recent memory. And now it was getting attention from Washington. I made clear to the Attorney General that we should do what is necessary to help determine exactly what happened and to see that justice is done. I also just spoke with Governor Jay Nixon of Missouri. I expressed my concern over the violent turn that events have taken on the ground and underscored that now's the time for all of us to reflect on what's happened and to find a way to come together going forward. Uh, he is going to be traveling to Ferguson. After days of largely staying silent, Missouri's governor finally showed up in Ferguson, promising changes. 
today, I am announcing that the Missouri Highway Patrol, under the supervision of Captain Ron Johnson, who grew up in this area, will be the directing the team that provides security in Ferguson. Yeah. Governor, how would you explain the nature of the presence that we saw on the streets yesterday? I mean, there were armored personnel carriers, about 100 police in military-style uniform, high-powered rifles being trained on the crowd. I mean, who is in charge of making those decisions, and are they going to be held to account for mistakes that you clearly think have been made? No, no, I, I think that uh, um, that was yesterday, tonight's tonight, tomorrow's tomorrow. Captain Johnson. I appreciate the significance of this responsibility. Looking forward meant a new face for the police command, Captain Ron Johnson, who was born in the community. Don't shoot! Don't shoot! The scene on Thursday was very different from the previous night of tear gas and military vehicles. There seemed to be fewer police, and those who were there walked the streets with the protesters. The change in approach seemed to lift the mood. But that atmosphere was short-lived. The next morning, Ferguson's police chief finally announced the name of Darren Wilson, the officer who had killed Michael Brown. But almost in the same breath, he also released this video footage. It allegedly showed Brown stealing cigars from a convenience store in an unrelated incident. His grieving family was incensed. The motives for releasing the video and its timing were immediately questioned. Did he know that he was a suspect in a case, or did he not know? And you, you say you're concerned by our safety, but it seems like you're only concerned about your officer's safety. Chief Justice, I'm going to read you a statement here. Michael Brown's family is beyond outraged at the devious way the police chief has chosen to disseminate piecemeal information in a manner intended to assassinate the character of their son. What's your response to that? We have given you everything that we have now and everything that we can give you. So that's from from our police department. We have You have all, everything we've got. There's nothing else that I can give you. Chief Jackson, the timing of the release of this video. Michael Brown's family held an impromptu press conference outside the police station in response. This is just something that people do to try to divert the attention from what the real problem is. Condemning what they branded as an attempt to criminalize him and justify the officer's actions. So whatever that took place there had nothing to do with an individual getting down on his hands and knees, raising his hands in the air and saying, don't shoot. This is a universal call for I surrender. And I can hear my cousin's voice right now as I speak saying, don't shoot. Down at ground zero later that evening, news of the video's release had spread. People were angry. But instead of trying to diffuse the tension by minimizing police presence, the armored vehicles were out once again. It didn't take long before things started to happen. Soon, a small group started smashing store windows. Okay, well, there's looting starting now. You can see people have actually broken into this. Okay, 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 okay. 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 Let's get out of here, get out of here. But then another group of young men quickly moved in to stop the looting. Why, why are you standing here? To protect the third store. We're not all. It's just us. You see, there's a group over there. It's a group over there. It's a group down there. We ain't stopping everybody from going to the store. You see the store is still here. They finna set it on fire. They finna burn it. Fire! Fire! Stop! For these protesters, there was no question who was to blame for what was happening in Ferguson. The city has got these black people down. Ferguson, I get, I get harassed on the daily. It's a up laws, it's a up, and it's harassment that go on every day for people, including myself, including a lot of these black males. When you feel like a target, when you feel like a target, how the you gonna react? And that's some real So the guys protecting the convenience store are saying that they blame the police for inflaming the situation, appearing in this manner in the armored vehicles and the riot gear again. And they say that's the reason why people got angry, started looting stores. We're gonna go and try and speak to the police and ask why they deployed like this after everything that's happened. <laughs> so media. 
Who's who, who's in charge here? What do you need? Who's the commanding officer what do right you here? Need? I need to speak to the commanding Just officer. Stay right here. Thank you. Are you the commanding officer? No, but what we need is you to get to a safe spot, please. We just we've we've been spending time with the crowd, and they're asking why the police deployed in this way with the armored vehicles and the military gear. Because need, they, their understanding was that that was going to be. A, we're trying to maintain safety. But why did you feel it was necessary to bring out the armored vehicles? We're I mean, done we're talking. Was there a reason we're for? We're done talking. You need to either go ahead back where you ever you want to be. We're done talking. Is there anyone I can speak to? There's is there a no press officer or and 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 anyone? There's no media contact here at all. Not right now. No. Sir. That's what what? Sir, we're done. The state had promised a different approach, but the militarized response was back, and no one could tell us why. Meanwhile, down the street, the police continued advancing on the protesters. Stay back! The looting had stopped, but it seemed like anger and distrust were growing once again. Straight up! Did y'all hear about the first riots? Yeah. What do you think? It was an outcry. That's pure emotion. If everybody feeling the way, these kids doing this, these kids have no outlet. You want to know the truth? Talk to the oppressed. During the protests on the streets of Ferguson, we'd met Miller, Ronald, and Solomon. They'd been out demonstrating every night since the shooting. They're from northern St. Louis County, an area that includes Ferguson and is predominantly African American. So tell us a bit about the, this neighborhood. It's, it's, it's the slums. It's what she was from, right? You know? My whole family. family. Grew up, you know, we all grew up over here. You grew up over here in Kinlock? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what kind of a neighborhood is it? Uh, it used to be a nice neighborhood years, years, many years ago. And so we just was forgotten about. Their anger and frustration at the police ran deep. Because they, they just you harass you, you don't, they, they you don't treat you like you don't belong over there. Who do? The police? The police. Yeah, we got two strikes, and that's black and male. Them, th that's our two strikes. So all we got to do is miss a blinker, and we stretched out out in the middle of the street. That's what people say, yes. two strikes. You make a face at a cop, strike three, you're out. You're going to jail for something. It's not just a perception of unfair treatment. They have no connection to them culturally other than as police officers patrolling an area and, 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 and enforcing the law. Adolphus Pruitt is head of the local NAACP chapter, which filed a federal civil rights complaint against the St. Louis County Police for disproportionately targeting blacks. A young black kid can live in an urban area, and when he leaves his house and he's going for a walk or he's going to work or he's going to school, he's subject to be stopped by police, he's subject to be questioned, he's subject to have to produce identification, He's said to be ran through the system to see if he has any outstanding warrants. And then after all of that, then he said, OK, you can go ahead. And in, case, in some cases, that happened for no reason at all. That is what's breeding and festering the problem that we had. Even if they avoid the police, these young men have other odds stacked against them. The unemployment rate for African-Americans in this county is three times that of whites. St. Louis is probably one of the most segregated communities in the country, both racially and socioeconomically. As African Americans move in, whites move out. And what happens also with that is some of the highest paying jobs, some of the best of uh, 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 living conditions go with them. Among black males aged between 16 and 24, the unemployment rate here has reached nearly 50%. Coming back to losing hope. What do we have to bank on after school? I went to college, got my uh, uh, medical assistant. I wanted to be in the medical field. They found out I had a felony. Guess what happened? I spent $20,000 for nothing. I get my hands dirty working on cars now. How does that make you feel? Like a bag of sh What I'm supposed to do? Does it make you angry? Hell yeah. So when people talk about the anger that they they feel, it's not just about law enforcement. It's it, it's about it's about life in general. Yeah. Yeah. Some people want to roll over and take it. 
we got older generations that just be like, hey, don't talk to the police like that and stuff like that, and we, we won't be saying nothing. Crazy. They be like, don't talk, just be quiet, just be quiet. And I was like, what happened to freedom of speech? Mm -hmm. Why is mine modified? What happened? Mm -hmm. You know? Long-time community activists like Jamala Rogers say the underlying discontent is the same that fueled protests in the 60s by the black community. So you have somebody that can't find a job, you have somebody that's been marginalized in society, and then three, four times a week you get hassled by the police? I mean, come on, how much can a, can a young person stand who, who doesn't necessarily have the tools to deal with this stuff? And sometimes it just comes out pretty raw. Then you have the response of the police department to a community's natural, organic reaction to what has happened. And what do they get? They get a militarized police force. That has to do with some systemic racial issues that need to be resolved. The Ferguson Police Department declined our repeated requests for an interview. This is bigger than Mike Brown. This is bigger than Trayvon Martin. This is about making sure it doesn't happen yeah. again. Like, don't pacify us for a minute. Don't, don't throw us a bone and then think you're going to be able to get away with the, with the your daughter or my son. Yeah. No, it, it stops. It shouldn't have never happened. This is a defining moment in this country. Ferguson and Michael Brown Jr. will be a defining moment on how this country deals with policing and the rights of its citizens to redress how police behave in this country. After a week of boiling tensions in Ferguson, more than a 1,000 people came together Sunday morning for a moment of unity and prayer. Just know that this was their child. And they loved their child. They had every right for their child to have due process of the law. We're here to talk about justice. We're here to talk about standing up for our children. Because if we don't stand up for our children, nobody will stand up for our children. We have had enough. Had enough. Had enough. While the mood here was hopeful, the images from Ferguson at night remained the same. Armored vehicles and military uniforms continued to respond to the protests. Law enforcement began to corral the media behind police tape. So we would be arrested as journalists if, if we go outside this zone. They're going to make the decision on what you do. I mean, that's a curfew zone. In the days that followed, and in the days that will come, whether the street protests die down or intensify again, the underlying message from this community is unlikely to change. That this was bigger than Michael Brown. It was about a fight to change a system that stacked against them from birth. Michael Brown is, is a foundation for this. He is one of the pieces of the foundations for this. But this right here has been bubbling underneath the surface for a long time. 